For the average consumer, this would strike fear into the hearts of many. However, me being cautiously optimistic, I was willing to see what was going to happen. And I was right in my optimism, because this is the best Switch game they've made yet. Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle has to be one of the most interesting games they've ever made because they decided to give Mario a gun and make it a XCOM turn-based style. I don't even want to know how that meeting happened. I imagine it was something like this. Hey Nintendo, uh, can we put guns in a Mario game? What? Yeah, can we also put the Rabbids in it and make it a turn-based XCOM strategy game as well, uh, please, and thank you? Dog, you definitely smoking nut! Oh yeah, we were also planning to have some Donkey Kong-related DLC opportunities, is that okay? I'm about to just hit y'all bitches with a Rasengan or something. I mean, we could make Luigi dab if you guys want that. We could do that. Listen, I just need a baguette and a brioche. Incredible. Now I gotta level with you guys. When I first tried to make this video, I was gonna originally just do it over the Donkey Kong DLC. And I was trying to go through the story and the gameplay, but I realized uh, I suck at describing stories. So I figured why not just condense it into the DLC and the main game and only talk about the gameplay because I could probably do that a lot better than try and describe the, you know, the story. Plus it's, it's a Mario game. You already know what the story is. Shut, shut up. Since I can't talk story, let's talk gameplay. And what better place to start than our starters? Funnily enough, two of them might just drive you rabid without cra- oh I'm fuck- I'm so sorry, bro. Okay, fine! How about we start with our- Universal, universal moves. Moves. moves! A speed run of all the universal moves and how they differ from each character. Important question. Do you like sliding? Well, boy, do I have a move for you. Everybody can slide. The rabbits can slide. The humans can slide. The rabbits get to slide more than usual, though. Rabbit Beast gets to do it four times. Rabbit Mario gets to do it three times. He gets to explode. Rabbit Yoshi gets to do it five times. Rabbit Luigi gets to do it twice, but he has a vampire effect. That's all the size, but just look at them go. Jumping. If Mario didn't do it, he wouldn't be called Jumpman. He'd be called Man. So everybody can do it. The rabbits can do it, and the humans can do it. But the humans are a little bit more special, just like the rabbits were special with their dashes. Mario gets to ground pump people, so he gets to jump on people's heads, while getting to jump on other people's feet. Luigi gets to double jump, basically, so he gets to jump on one friend, and then jump on another friend. Peach gets to do a jump where she heals people. That's actually how she heals, but I'm going to talk about that later. And Yoshi he gets to ground pound, but he gets to just smash the entire different area. Okay, last up is movement. Wait, why do I need to tell you about movement? You move around. Figure it out. God, stupid. You like guns, right? Of course you do. You're an American. And plus, it's the whole reason you got interested in this game in the first place if you're even watching this video. And boy, does this game have a plethora of weapons. Even vacuum cleaners for some reason. Mario and Rabbit Peach have pistols. You know how pistols work. They go bang, bang, pew, pew. Peach and Rabbit Mario have shotgun. And yes, they do function like every shotgun ever in a video game. Here. Alakablam! I'm gonna wanna get. Well, alright. Of course, just to have good juxtaposition, Yoshi and Rabbit Yoshi have fing miniguns. I don't know why, but they do. Luigi took your grandma's old vacuum cleaner and turned it into a sniper rifle. Honestly, it makes a lot of sense for his character. Rabbit Luigi is weird. Do you guys remember that, like, magical eight ball thing that you could do those, like, tricks with on your hands? It was, I don't even really know how to describe it, but that's basically what that is. It tickles your balls. I don't huh? know. Mario and Rabbit Mario's secondaries are hammers. They decided to play Smash Bros, but only with the hammer item. They're those people. For Luigi and Rabbit Peach's secondaries, they have centuries. Not the Team Fortress 2 ones, more so Call of Duty Black Op. Roombas. Remember the RCXDs? Yeah, those ones. I don't know why Nintendo likes to give the most adorable characters the most destructive weapons, but these two dudes right here have Rocket Launcher for some ungodly reason. I don't know why. To finish off our secondary weapons, Peach and Rabbit Yoshi have grenades, specifically grenade ducks. They took a duck and put a grenade in it. This game is weird. Alright, we've got one more segment before we talk about actual gameplay. Sure, a character is cool with guns and, you know, whatever they do, but what are their abilities that make them distinct from everybody else? All human characters share the same two abilities, a buff of some sort and a thing called, I'm gonna call Overwatch. No, not that one. Basically, if an enemy runs in the line of sight while this ability is activated, they'll shoot them. 
depending on the character and their weapon, it can range from one to three times, and also damage varies depending on the range. It's amazing. It's an amazing ability. It's in my opinion where the combat really strides. Mario's secondary ability is an attack buff, and he does this by telling his friends that If you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Luigi's secondary ability is a movement buff. He tells his teammates, Hey, get the man out of here. Which it gives his teammates the ability to move one extra space. Peach's ability isn't as much as it is a buff as it is protection. Basically, she'll surround all of her teammates with a shield, and any damage they take will be significantly reduced and blasted back at her. It's it's, it's a weird one. I don't really use it a lot personally. The last buff we have to talk about is Yoshi. You remember all the times you died in an RPG or an FPS that had critical hits, but it wasn't fair and it was random? Well, Yoshi decides to turn all of that onto the opponent, but this time it's guaranteed for every single shot. It is, in my opinion, the strongest ability in the game. All of the rabbits have shields. Mario Rabbids is the worst. It reduces slide damage. That's basically it. Don't use it. Rabbit Peaches is the overall. It's really good. Rabbit Luigi's doesn't do either very well, but it does make him immune to all critical hit effects. And Rabbit Yoshi's is the weirdest. He only can get hit once with it, but does it reduces the most damage out of all the shields. Rabbit Mario played a little bit too much Fortnite, he starts dancing in public, so everybody surrounds him to try and beat him up for it. Rabbit Peach's second ability is doing the Jesus and healing people. It's weird though, the fact that you can't resurrect anybody. I hope they fix that in the sequel. Rabbit Luigi's secondary ability is a debuff, he basically weakens all the enemies, like the Donkey Kong Country TV show. <laughs> all done, that wasn't so bad, was it? Now with Donkey Kong rendered powerless, K. Rool sends in the stupid ass blue guy to kill Donkey Kong. Finally, we have Rabid Yoshi. You may be wondering, what's his special ability? And you already saw it. He yells. What does he yell? Racial slurs, believe it or not. <laughs> now that we're done talking about characters, we can finally start talking about the gameplay. It's it's not that complicated. It's actually very simple, but in my opinion, it's got a high skill ceiling, whatever that means. All right, let's start with the gameplay mode that sucks. Uh, team deathmatch. That's what I'm calling it. Basically, you have a friend over, you fight it out three on three. It it's it's kind of bad. I I don't have any I don't really have anything to say. Just just kind of watch the footage and it's it's just bad. In fact. I didn't get anybody to play it with me. I couldn't. Mostly because I didn't try, but that's besides the point. Okay, obviously I'm exaggerating a little bit. It's not that bad, but it's just really boring. Like, I played this mode with my friend who also really likes the game. I've literally never lost to him. I've had moments where I should have lost and didn't just because of literally no reason. I just beat him. It, and it doesn't even matter what character you pick. They're all evenly matched enough, and even then it's... Ugh, it's just, it's, it's not that good. Moving on. This is my personal favorite, the co-op mode. Basically, you and a friend get two characters to pick, and you have to complete a similar goal, whether it be reaching the end, defeating all the enemies, defeating a boss. Because every single thing in it is What have you. But the gimmick is, is that you each control two separate characters, usually paired opposites with each other. So if you have Mario and Luigi on your team, well, they're not gonna be next to each other. It'll be like Mario and whoever your friends got. I love this mode because it just allows such a like higher level of creativity. Like you can, you'd be like, hey dude, bounce that dude up there and then I can activate this ability that'll scare him and then and they're all dead. Let me show you an example. like that you get your victory royale now give me your mom's credit card number i only really have one complaint with this game mode and it's 
Because it's too easy. Oh my goodness, Smokey! A Mario game is too easy? What? Just shut the hell up and listen to my reasoning. My reasoning for not liking the difficulty is because regardless of where you are in the story, you could be at the very end and you're allowed to play the earlier co-op missions with your higher leveled people. I think if they were to have locked it to like that specific region, like, oh, you can only have Luigi, Luigi up to Luigi team members, or only up to like uh, Peach team members, like, I don't know, Rabbit Yoshi, boom. I think that would have like at least minimized the challenge because like, imagine doing the whole thing. You beat the whole game. You maxed out everything. Then you go back. You just dog wash it. Now, yeah, you could make it harder, but are you really going to do that? No. No, you're not going to do that. I just realized while recording this audio that me talking about the co-op and the the team deathmatch, I basically just summarized the main gameplay in two different segments. The main game is no different from co-op or team deathmatch. The only difference is it's single player and you have three teammates max. And Mario has to be in your main roster and you have to have at least one rabbit. So, I'm just going to show you footage of me beating a bunch of bosses, and I think you'll get the gist of it. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, guys, I gotta, I gotta be straight with you. I kind of forgot to talk about the elemental effects. You've been seeing them throughout the clips I've been showing you, but I've done a horrible job of actually showing you and telling you what they've done. So, like the universal moves, we're gonna speed run this section real quick. All right, so we've got two different categories of effects. One group I'm gonna call the movement-based effects, and the other I'm gonna call the status-based effects. We're gonna start with the movement ones because they're the worst ones. So, fire is basically just causing you to sporadically move around the grid. Like you're actually on fire. I don't 
I don't know, it's it's all right, I guess. I don't really use it if I have the choice to not use it. Push is exactly what it sounds like. It's like fire, but instead of sporadically, it's in a straight or diagonal or horizontal line. It works on the basis of geometry, so if you bump into things, you'll start bouncing around, but it's somebody pushed you into a locker and you fell to the ground. It's, it's geometry. You hit something, you fall down. That's it. It's, again, I don't like it. Bounce is the only one that I think is actually good because it works well with the hero shot. It does exactly what it sounds like. You get hit and you bounce all over the place. You just get sent in the opposite direction. Again, it's super basic, but it's the only one I actually like because it can actually be used to set up four hero shots. Now we move on to status base effects. These ones are actually good. Okay, first up is ink. Ink basically negates all primary and secondary fire for the next turn. So they cannot attack you with any of their weapons. However, they can still slide into you and use their abilities, but they're equivalent to a chicken running around without its head. Not very useful. Honey is just ink, but instead of removing the ability to attack, it removes your ability to move. So you can still damage people. I think it's pretty good, you know? Like Captain Falcon and Meningitis, what the f Ice is just worse honey and ink. Instead of limiting mobility or damage, it limits abilities. Don't use this one. Now, if you want something that does all three of the things I just mentioned, check out Luigi here. He made his own stone football. Look. It's a stone, Luigi. You didn't make it. Stone is the best one. It, it eliminates the player. You cannot do anything. You can't move. You can't do damage. You can't use abilities. Nathan. You're probably asking. How do you get rid of any of these ailments? It seems like they're pretty OP. Well, it's really easy for all these status-based ones. You just jump on people's heads. Don't do that in real life. You will go to jail. I almost forgot vampire, but vampires basically, once you give them this status ailment, every time you attack them, you'll heal a slight portion of your health back, depending on how much damage you did. Oh my goodness, alright, this video took a while, but I think we're finally done. I will catch you guys in the next episode- Did you guys hear that? Oh my god. I think- Is that who I think it is? Oh my god. It's- It's- Donkey Kong! And rapid cranky. Also, I'm speeding this up because unironically, this unsped up was 20 seconds. I'm gonna just let you sit with that. In case you weren't already sold on this game and the premise alone, they decided to release a Donkey Kong standalone DLC. Well, not standalone, you gotta have the game to buy it, but it's Donkey Kong related. Now, I know some people have certain opinions about this primitive ape but uh we don't associate with those people speaking of donkey kong look guys it's donkey kong you get to play as donkey kong and his grandfather cranky kong that's not cranky kong oh yeah and i guess rabbit peach is here too which means we don't have to review her character because she plays the exact same as in the main game now because donkey kong is a gorilla he's too fat to actually jump on people so instead he crushes them turns their bones into liquid and forms a ball so he can throw them this does however replace the form of his slide but that doesn't really matter when it doubles as not only a damage dealer but a mobility use speaking of mobility donkey kong has two specific mobility options unique to him he can swing across these DK panels, which allow him to just traverse the terrain more easily. And he can climb walls like Spider-Man. He doesn't have to go through pipes or any of that, any of that normie stuff. He's cool. Cranky Kong's mobility gimmick is that when he's either 
thrown by Donkey Kong or jumping off of a teammate near an enemy, he'll shoot his crossbow downward, dealing a set amount of damage and, depending on the weapon, a status effect of whatever weapon choice you have. It's pretty good. Uh, it's just cheap, easy damage before or after you've done an attack and are moving. I like it. Unlike Rabbit Mario, Donkey Kong's not a fucking loser, so instead of playing Fortnite music, he plays some sick-ass bongo music. They don't even come to him because they want to beat him up, they actually want to dance to him. <laughs> Rabbit Cranky really wants to tell you he can beat the original Donkey Kong Adventure game in under two hours with no continues and restarts, but nobody cares and they all get really bored and fall asleep. Oh. Oh. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the hero shot. Both Donkey Kong and Rabid Cranky actually get to both use the hero shot. Rabid Cranky gets to use it twice while Donkey Kong only gets to use it once. Speaking of hero shot, I haven't even gone over their weapons. Donkey Kong's weapons are what you'd expect from him. He throws a banana, but it's also a boomerang, so it can hit multiple targets. It also works with his hero shot that'll hit more, multiple targets as well. Really good. And his secondary is a ground pound. You ever see Donkey Kong smack the ground in Smash Bros? That's exactly what this does. Obliterates the shit out the ground. Cranky Kong gets a... Shotgun! It doesn't really feel like a shotgun though. Probably because it's not. It actually doubles as a walking cane too. It's probably because he's old. Now, unfortunately, the Donkey Kong DLC does not have a co-op mode or a deathmatch mode. I understand the deathmatch mode, but I don't understand the co-op mode to an extent. I wish they could have brought the other characters over, but I, I sort of get it. But that was, um, I covered pretty much everything I think I could. Since I don't know how to do outros, I'm just going to play you a clip that I've been saving for a while. I posted it a while back, but I don't think anybody saw it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be my outro. Boy, Brian, Brian, bring that ass here, boy. And who's that? Oh, it's Mr. MVP! Hello to all that made it this far into the video, that part of the video being the outro. I truly appreciate it if you actually decided to sit through this whole video and watch all of it. It was probably really bad, because this is the first time I've ever done something like this. But that's besides the point, because I wanted to get this video out regardless of how I thought it was going to do. This video started back the summer of this year. So, like, roughly around, like, June, July. This was originally gonna, like I said in the intro, it was originally gonna be about the Donkey Kong DLC. But I suck at telling stories, so I figured why not just make, basically, a really long shit post about the gameplay of the, of the DLC. But then I thought, why not just do that about the whole game? So that's how we got it. Originally, this was supposed to get out before the second game. Obviously, that didn't happen. So, I'm gonna take this last bit to ramble about what I think the new game looks like. Also, yeah, uh, I'm just going to be looking at the trailer. I know that the actual game is out, but I'm not trying to spoil stuff that wasn't shown in the trailer. Uh, shut up. Just from this segment alone, they already fixed the biggest issue with the first game was that you had to have Mario and you had to have one rabbit. Now you can have whoever you want on the team. You don't even got to have Mario if you don't want to. That's awesome. The whole map is, instead of being like segmented areas, it's like open world like level arenas. That's awesome. Also, Luigi has proper overalls now. Don't know why he didn't have those in the first place. I think there's voice acting. Uh, I don't know. It looks it looks all right. I'm not gonna lie. There's like proper dialogue with like established characters. I'm all for it, honestly, if they sound goofy enough. We have two brand new characters, uh, Deviantardo, see his name, I'm not gonna bother to look up, and Rabid Rosalina. Yeah, that's pretty much how I imagine her. I'm glad they decided to get Jack Black positioned before the Mario movie, just to see what he'd sound like. I think it was a good idea to do that. The arenas are no longer grid-based, but are actual free open roaming. I think you can move in a set amount of area, and then you set yourself up to shoot. Everybody got new weapons. Mario's dual wielding. Peach has a shotgun umbrella. Luigi has a bow. Whoever this character is has a knife thingy. They've all gotten unique weapons to their character, and I, I love it. You can interact. You can fly with Beepo now. You have the these rabid Lumas. 
Oh my goodness, it, it looks so, so much better. They improved in every single way that I, that I could have hoped for. You can use environmental bob bombs, different enemy types that aren't just generic rabbits. I mean, you got that huge cat thing, bro, like, you collect little star bits? This is just, ah, oh, it's beautiful. Rapid Mario does the JoJo. No, that looks great, but like, what's really gonna get me to buy this game? <gasps> I need it! Again, I really cannot thank you guys enough if you decided to stick around and actually bother to watch this whole 25 to 28 long minute video. Uh, just to let you guys know how I recorded this, I don't have a capture card. And since this isn't on the PlayStation, I don't really have a proper way to record Switch footage. So I had to manu manually record 30 second pieces of gameplay, then download that from my Switch to my phone. The process of just getting that takes forever. I hope I don't ever have to do that again. But honestly, I had so much fun making this video that I wouldn't mind doing it again. And hopefully I get the sequel soon so maybe I can review that one once I feel confident enough to do another really long video like this. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a good rest of your day, and maybe consider sticking around. Peace out.